Right, it is now time to test whether it's important to separate the pairs into singles or not. I'm a great fan of keeping them in pairs, and if the pair it tests to be no good, then I don't use it, and if it tests to be good, then I'm happy with it. Then most other people separate all their cells into single cells and test them individually, which takes roughly twice as much time, but uh, they say you're more likely to get more good cells out of separating them. So, let's see if I'm right or wrong, let's see what the situation is. What I'm going to do is take these eight pairs, separate, test them, then uh, separate them and retest them. So what I've got is uh, six of these pairs have been charged and I believe they are good to move on to the next stage of my testing process, which is discharging. This one here overheated when, well, it got warm when I tried to charge it and it never quite reached 4.2 volts. So, in as far as I'm concerned, that's a bad pair, but I'll test it, separate it, and we'll see if one of them might be good. Then this one here, uh, initially read as zero volts, I tried charging it and it wouldn't charge uh, in my 20 way charger. So then I tried the trick where you um, connect that in parallel with an unknown good cell, and the theory is that the good cell will charge the, the bad ones. Um, and that didn't do anything, so as far as I can tell, this is a totally stuffed pair. But let's add that into the mix just to see what happens. Because it could be that when I separate them, I find one of them is good. Who knows? Let's find out. Let's have a look at, first of all, the voltages. I've made myself a little chart. So the voltage now, after charging, uh, charged volts is 3.964. Then we'll test the internal resistance 107, 91, 118, 121, 105, 97, and 101. So um, all of those are what I would consider acceptable. This one is a wee bit high, but not super high. The next thing I will do is a discharge capacity test on all of those, and we will see how those go, and uh, take it from there. Let's leave that to run. Here we are eight hours later. Alright, those are done. I will label all of those A, B. Now the plan is separate all those, put some gloves on because this is definitely the kind of process that ends in me getting cut up. Just out of curiosity, I will measure the voltage on them now. 3.74 V is 3.74 The next step is to charge all those up. That's charging. And let's see what happens here. Nope. Nope. 
So these are all fine. These two that were refusing to charge previously are still refusing to charge. So once again, I'm going to try the um, process whereby you zap it with a good cell. These cells, I think, are totally dead. I shall carry on. Let these charge up. Okay, so it's the next morning. All of these have charged. These two here refuse to charge and they're both a little warm, which is what they used to do when they were a pair. Let's see what the voltages are. 4.12, 4.12, and the internal resistances are 101. Alright, so I've got all that information. Uh, do the same for these other ones. Right, so the next stage is to measure the capacity on all of these. And I want the current to be 1000. First batch have been discharged and the capacity is 901, 11.33. 2241, 2282, 1556, 1180, 1456, 2419, 2427, 2509, 2501. Remarkably similar. And here's the last four done. 2200, 2100, null, null. Those are the dead ones. So, I've got that written down. Now it's time to work out what all this means. Mm -hmm.